So let's talk about managing Windows Server performance options. Now, Microsoft presets some of these options, and normally what they preset is going to be just fine. But there might be times when you want to fine-tune a couple of things related to the operating system specifically. So I want to show you how to do that. We're going to go to our Start, and we're going to find our Control Panel. So just pen to the start over here, I'm going to choose Control Panel, and then System and Security, System, and then Advanced System Settings. And there are a couple of things here. You'll have Computer Name, Hardware, Advanced. We want this Advanced tab, and I want to look at Performance. And there are some Performance settings in here that we kind of want to be aware of. So first thing here, our first tab is going to be Visual Effects. And notice it says, let Windows choose what's best for my computer. We can also do custom, adjust for best performance, adjust for best appearance. Now, typically on a server, now on a desktop, you might want to do things that are a little more appearance-oriented, right? On a server, you're not looking for nice, flashy appearance. In fact, most of the time, you're not going to be working at the server at all. You're going to be accessing the server remotely. So the appearance becomes much less of an issue. By the way, these same settings are available for Windows clients as well. So if you want to fine-tune performance of your Windows clients, you can come to the same spot. So notice by letting Windows choose what's best for my computer, the only real thing they have selected here is smooth edges of screen fonts. That's fine. Now, under Advanced, we have a couple of other things. The first one is Processor Scheduling. And so this determines who gets priority access to the processor. And it does in two different groups, background services or programs. Now, the program is something that you are running interactively. So I'm sitting here, I'm working in Server Manager, I'm working in the control. Those are going to be programs. Background services are things that I'm running for the network. So my DHCP service, my DNS service, my IIS service, my Active Directory Domain Services service, all of those are services. <clears throat> now, once again, we're not going to be sitting at the a, the desktop of the server working on a regular basis. So typically, we're going to want that optimized for background services. Now, there might be an instance where you want to switch your pri processor scheduling priority here. Let's say you were maybe doing a big backup or something like that. And so you might want to say, hey, I want a little more processor time for what I'm doing interactively right now. But most of the time, we're going to leave it set to background services. On a Windows desktop, that tends to be set for programs because those are more important on a desktop because you're interacting with the system directly through the console rather than background services. Now, the other one here is virtual memory. Now, Microsoft has gone to this automatically manage paging as a default for both servers and workstations. Now, there may be instances where you want to control this a little bit better. So for that, or control it manually. So for that, you would uncheck manage paging files, and then you would start setting your size. And you see every drive down here, and you'll select the drive, the size that you want, uh, you can choose whether there's no paging file, your custom sizing of the system sizing, or whatever. Now, general rule of thumb if you do this. Most of the time, unless there is a compelling reason to do this, I don't. I will leave it set for automatically managing. But if I'm having issues and I'm wondering if I fine-tune this manually, can I get this a little bit better performance-wise, then sometimes I'll come in here and adjust things. So couple of things to keep in mind for performance. Number one, theoretically, you can run a system with no paging, no uh, paging file. Don't. You shouldn't do that, but theoretically, it will work. There are a couple of things you need that for. By the way, the paging file just kind of extends the reach of your physical memory. So if you have something in physical memory, as not been used for a while, sometimes it'll be written out as a page to this paging file to free up physical memory for things that we're moving on a regular basis, just so it's not sitting there in memory, not actually doing anything. And then when the system needs it again, it'll go read it from that page file back into physical memory. Now, this, by the way, is also sometimes called the swap file. The problem with that is the more you have to do that, hard drive is way slower than physical RAM. So the more you have to do that, the slower it gets. So if you notice that you're running that swap file an awful lot, and we're going to talk about that a little bit later on, uh, when we look at performance, 
and tracking performance. If you see that happening, then you're going to want to give the system more physical memory. But you want to leave it, uh, have it running anyway. Now, a couple of things you can do if you customize this to get best performance out of it. Number one, make sure that you have roughly 50% more, minimum, uh, than your physical RAM. So if you've got a system with 32 gigabytes uh, physical RAM, you're probably going to want to give it at least 48 gigabytes as a minimum, an initial size of uh, paging file, and then up to at least twice that. Um, the other thing, this is going to be the maybe the bigger of the two, and that is if you can, if you're going to manage this, and you can do it, uh, put your swap file or your paging file on a different physical device. That doesn't mean different volume letter, right? So if I've got you know one hard drive and I've got a partition to C drive and D drive, okay, that's not what I'm talking about. It's two different physical hard drives. If you can move your paging file to a different physical hard drive than your operating system file, you'll sometimes see a bit of a, of a performance boost there because the operating system file and the paging file won't be contending for access to the same physical device. Okay, so that's how you manu manually manage virtual memory. And again, remember, I don't do that very often unless there is actually a need to. So if I notice the system is running slow and I want to try to fine tune it a little bit, then I'll come in and play with things like this. But if I don't have to, I'm kind of going to let it manage because most of the time it'll do, Windows will do just fine on its own. Now, the last thing under here in performance options is data execution prevention. Data execution prevention is designed to stop viruses and other security risks. It doesn't always work perfectly. And what, what I mean by that is sometimes you're running applications that won't function correctly because data execution prevention is keeping them from doing something that they want to do. And they're not a virus, it's legitimate software, but it's trying to do something other than what you would typically want it to do. So in that case, we can, we've got a couple of options. So we can turn on DEP for essential Windows programs and services only. Gives you a little less protection for your whole system, but it does protect the essential Windows programs and services. The other thing is I can turn it turn it off for specific applications. So if I know this application is running slowly, because it's trying it's being hindered by DEP, then I can come down here and add that application. I'd go find the application executable file. And then DEP just won't will ignore that particular application. Okay. So that gives you an idea of some ways to kind of fine tune your performance of your Windows Server.